we certainly want to see banks succeed in this new world order. We certainly want to see banks succeed in this new world order. This new world order. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know I come with that video just to make you think. We're going to listen to Brad Garlinghouse on CNBC. Up today, around 23,400. But another cryptocurrency, Ripple, having a rough day. Down 10% today, 20% in two days, as the company expects to be sued by the SEC. We're going to ask the CEO about that. But first, let's bring in Kate Rooney to explain exactly what's going on here. Hi, Kate. Hi, Rahel. Ripple says the SEC is preparing to sue that crypto startup for selling unlicensed securities. The asset in question here is called XRP. It's a cryptocurrency, much like Bitcoin. Uh, Ripple uses it for its clients, which are mostly businesses and banks, to send instant payments across borders. Eight years ago, when Ripple was founded, they decided to create their own digital currency to do that. Bitcoin, they say, wouldn't work. They said it was too slow. They began selling the new cryptocurrency over scheduled periods of time, which helped fund the business. Ripple still owns the majority of this cryptocurrency. The startup also raised cash from some big name VCs, including Peter Thiel's Founders Fund and Andreessen Horowitz. It now has a $10 billion valuation. Ripple's founders never registered XRP as a security before selling it to other investors. They argue it's more like a utility and that it's a currency meaning it, wouldn't be, it would be regulated by the CFTC and not the SEC. No comment yet from the SEC, but I'm told their argument is that XRP was an investment contract. People bought it with the expectations that they were getting a piece of Ripple, the company. Tyler, back to you. All right, Kate, thanks very much. And stay there as uh, we bring in uh, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, for a first on CNBC interview. Uh, Brad, welcome. Good to have you with us. And this is an interesting story. I'm going to pick up where, where Kate just left off, which was the idea that investors may have thought that in buying XRP, they were buying a security that gave them shares or some ownership in Ripple. Why is that wrong on its face? Well, first of all, Tyler, thanks for having me. I think this is an important issue. And I think there has been confusion out there. Ripple, the company, as Kate introduced, we have shareholders. We've raised capital from venture capitalists, from actually institutions, and even banks like Standard Charter is a shareholder. XRP is a separate thing altogether. It is a currency that trades in the marketplace. In the last eight years, over a trillion dollars of the currency has traded. And so what we find is you know, the SEC, in my opinion, having watched this for many, many years, uh, taking a position now that it is, frankly, I think, uh, with one foot out the door, a little bit incredible to kind of take the position after eight years. Now, we just listened to Brad Garlinghouse on CNBC. We know if you're on CNBC, it's all rehearsed. We know no one on CNBC comes up there with their own mind, their own thinking. We know this for a fact. Brad Garlinghouse just came out yesterday and said that the SEC was going to file a lawsuit. Now, the next day, guys, he's on CNBC because, guys, when it comes to the New World Order, everything is planned out. Now, why would he be on CNBC? Think of all the CEOs of all the great projects. Do we see Vitalik on CNBC? Do we see any of the Bitcoin developers on CNBC? You can't name me not one CEO or any founder or any of these projects that are constantly in the media. And guys, who owns your media? The New World Order. It's only four companies that own all media. So why is Brad Garlinghouse always on CNN, CNBC? Because guys, he's a puppet. He's a part of the New World Order's plan. Now, guys, you know I'm not a fan of Ripple. I'm not a fan of XRP. And those who belong to my Patreon, they always ask me why I don't have XRP on my list. And I've said this time and time again. I went over the lawsuit that went in from the gentleman that's similar to the SEC's lawsuit. It's the same, basically the same lawsuit. He purchased 307000 worth of XRP. At the height of when XRP was going up, I think he bought it for like $2 and some change. And of course, it comes down after he understood 
It's just a utility token. But the fact is, guys, we had Fenson back in 2015 find rep about $700,000. We already been through all this, guys. It's been eight years. The SEC could have been stepped in. But, guys, anytime they do this, this is about distractions. And it's like I said, I'm not a fan of Ripple, not a fan of XRP. The only reason why I'm doing this video because I know a lot of people on my Patreon still invest in XRP because you ask me questions all the time. But, guys, anytime you have the type of investors that I put the money in Ripple, they don't lose. Andreessen doesn't lose, guys. Remember, I tell you, that's my guy. It's always a plan with this. The only thing that worries me about XRP, like I've said it several times, is XLM because it's the same protocol. They can either combine it or basically XRP falls to the wayside and XLM rises. But one thing I'm going to say again, guys, is that in the Executive Order 13772, Ripple was in there, of course, as one of the fintech banks. So, guys, they always have a plan. Of course, we're going to sit back and watch it play out. But anytime you have Brad Garlinghouse getting ahead of it and then showing up on CNBC, which we know CNBC is staged, guys. It's staged from beginning to end. That's all they do is read off a teleprompter. We know this. So, guys, you have to understand this is a game. If you're on this channel, do not fall for the Hegelian dialectic. Do not fall for the New World Order's distractions. It's something bigger working behind the scenes. We know crypto is not going anywhere. Just like I said, the only thing that scares me about XRP is XLM because basically it's the same protocol. And we know XLM is clearly working with the governments around the world. And guys, don't forget, the guy who had 300000 worth of XRP he paid 100000 for it. If he had any inkling that XRP was going to be 100 or 1000 do you think it would be a lawsuit, guys? Let's use our common sense, guys. Have a wonderful day. There are a variety of cryptocurrencies, including XRP and obviously Bitcoin and, and others. Why do you think the SEC has... Is it something in the structure... Uh, of your business uh, that makes the SEC concerned that there may be a securities violation uh, of some sort in here. What's different about the way you are structured that would cause them to, to, to potentially file a suit? Well, it, about two and a half years ago, a little over two and a half years ago, the SEC came out proactively and said they did not view Bitcoin as a security. They viewed it as a commodity or currency. Shortly thereafter, they came out and said Ether, the second most valuable cryptocurrency, is also not a, uh, a security. They then have spent the last two and a half years going after uh, kind of enforcement by saying that certain initial coin offerings were securities offerings. Actually, I've spoken out in favor of that because I think in many cases those were, in fact, XRP, however, is almost undistinguishable from the, what is Ether in terms of its decentralization, in terms of the breadth of activity. It's traded on a couple hundred exchanges around the world. And what's amazing to me is not a single other current country anywhere has looked at XRP as a security. You've had countries like the UK and Japan and Switzerland and Singapore all come out and say things that are make it clear that XRP is a currency. Uh, actually, one other nugget I think is hey, interesting Brad. is even... Sorry. Even here in the U.S., the Department of Justice has viewed XRP as a currency, and uh, the Department of Treasury has viewed XRP as a currency. Sorry, Kate. That's right, Brad. Kate here. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. I want to ask you, you mentioned um, some of those exchanges. I want to ask you about the broader implications for others in the industry. Coinbase is a big name we talk about a lot. They see about 12% of their trading volume in XRP. That company is about to IPO. What would this mean to some of the global exchanges that hold XRP or facilitate trading of XRP on those exchanges? So about 95% of XRP trading happens outside the United States on exchanges around the world. And so that's outside of the United States SEC jurisdiction. For exchanges like Coinbase that are based here in the United States, one of the reasons why I view this as something that's broader than just, hey, what does this mean for Ripple and XRP? It's 
what does this mean for the crypto industry here in the United States? The SEC is really picking winners. They're saying there's a duopoly of Bitcoin and Ether are the two digital assets, the cryptocurrencies that will be not regulated by the SEC here in the United States. And it really, I think, sends a, an ominous sign for innovation around cryptocurrency in the United States. Picking winners in general has not been something the U.S. government should be in the business of doing. What will happen? And you mentioned before that X. Go ahead, go ahead, oh, Kate. Oh, sorry, Tyler. No, please, Kate. <laughs> No, that XRP could really go on without Ripple. You know, if you guys sold all of your holdings of XRP, that cryptocurrency could survive. Would you ever consider doing that, divesting all of your cryptocurrency holdings and really focus more on your enterprise payments business? Is that something that Ripple has considered or could do? It's certainly, I think, one of the ironies of all of this is that for XRP to be a security of a company, the company has to exist. And the point that I have made at various times is that if Ripple, the company, didn't exist, XRP would still thrive around the globe with you know, a couple hundred exchanges around the world. And there's over 100 different projects, innovative entrepreneurs here in the U.S. and around the world building on top of XRP. And the reason why they're doing that is because XRP is far more efficient in terms of speed, in terms of cost, to settling transactions and using it really as a currency. The power consumption has been widely reported of a Bitcoin transaction is dramatically different and you know costs a lot more. All right, folks, we gotta leave it there. Brad Garlinghouse, thank you for your time today. I'm sure this will be one we'll be following up on. And Kate Rooney, thank you as well. Rahel, thank you both. You bet. All right, Tyler. Well, despite the global pandemic. We certainly want to see banks succeed in this new world order. We certainly want to see banks succeed in this new world order. This new world